Well, hello, and welcome again to HMI Book Club. If you're just joining us, we're discussing Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Now, I, I need to give you a little background, which I didn't share with you. Viktor Frankl, before he was arrested and sent to a concentration camp, he was a practicing psychiatrist. And he, uh, he had his own methods, which incidentally we'll see here in a few minutes, are very similar to ours <laughs> here at HMI. It's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, and it was, but his, but that's what helped him, that's one thing that helped him survive. But I want to make it very clear is that he kept telling, he kept also the, the thought that he may eventually rejoin his wife once the war was over. Uh, but he, he existed for three years under these terrible, terrible conditions, but he kept going. And, uh, and basically, what kept him going, this is the essential message of the book, is no matter what situation I'm in, no matter how much other people are trying to control me, the one thing that they can't control is how I decide to react. And that's, a, I think, a very, very powerful message. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a good suggestion to give somebody in hypnosis. No matter what your situation is, you have the power to decide how you want to react. Uh, so many of our reactions are automatic, aren't they? Okay. He has a little section here on the meaning of life, and basically he, he, what he talks about the meaning of life is it's what we do. It's what we accomplish. Now he uh, points out that he disagrees with uh, one Sigmund Freud and another one Alfred uh, Adler, uh, two other psychologists, because they maintain that what motivates people in life is the pain-pleasure principle. We basically seek pleasurable things. But that was impossible in a concentration camp. So he, he's suggesting that finding one's meaning in life, what we do, what we accomplish, what we consciously set out to do, uh, the responsibility that we assume uh, are, are even more important than the pain-pleasure principle it, because it is important for us uh, to have a purpose in life. And once we establish that pur purpose, then we can pursue it. Uh, that's what we do here at HMI. We, our purpose is to help other people improve the quality and value of their lives. And the way we do that is to get them to think a little differently about their situations and, and how they function in life. Uh, one of the things I underline uh, here, uh, I do want to share with you, is he shares that one should not search for an abstract meaning of life. Everyone has his own specific vocation or mission in life to carry out a concrete assignment which demands fulfillment. Therein he cannot be replaced, nor can his life be replaced. Thus everyone's task is as unique as a specific opportunity to implement it. That's a pretty important concept. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a technique that he used that is very similar to our Capucinian modality. And uh, the technique that, as he describes it, uh, is uh, paradoxical intention. Uh, now, what he calls his approach, he calls it logotherapy. Uh, and its technique is called paradoxical intention on the twofold fact that fear brings about that which one is afraid of. Okay? And I'm going to read you an example of that. Um, and that hyperintention makes impossible what one wishes. He describes paradoxical intention as early as 1939. In this approach, the phobic patient is invited to intend, even if only for a moment, precisely that which he fears. <laughs> okay. So he recalls this case of a young physician that consulted him because of his fear of perspiring. Right. 
Uh, whenever he expected an outbreak of perspiration, this anticipatory anxiety, we know about anticipatory anxiety here, uh, was enough to precipitate excessive sweating. Right? In order to cut this circle formation, I advised the patient, in the event that sweating should occur, to resolve deliberately <laughs> to show people how much he could sweat. Okay. A week later, he returned to report that whenever he met anyone who triggered his anticipatory anxiety, he said to himself, I only sweated out of court before, but now I'm going to sweat, uh, I'm going to pour at least 10 quarts. The result was that after suffering from his phobia for four years, he was able, after a single session, to see himself permanently, uh, uh, to free himself permanently of it within a week. Now, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? And then, now you may be asking, well, how is that similar to the, uh, the Capucinian modality? And it's similar to the Capucinian modality in this regard. Uh, the modality, uh, one of the basics of the modality is the five dominant laws of suggestibility, of which the law of reverse reaction is one. And that's the ability of the mind to uh, accept a paradox. Uh, we use this when we do an arm rigidity. When the person's in hypnosis, we draw negative emotions into the arm and uh, counting backwards for five and it becomes stiff like a, a steel bar at zero. Now you can try and bend it, but the harder you try, the stiffer it becomes. And the person ends up not being able to bend it. Okay? This is similar to what he just described. So in effect, by the person telling him, I'm going to try to sweat out 10 quarts of sweat rather than one. <laughs> In effect, he's telling himself, the harder I try to sweat, the more difficult it becomes. All right? And, and uh, that's a pretty useful uh, a technique with clients. Uh, I, uh, I wrote an article about how uh, words affect uh, our, um, our behavior. And using that word try is, is <laughs> uh, one of the uh, things that people do, when it, but when they say they try to do it, they're not really doing something. Uh, uh, and there is an old saying, trying is lying. So in effect, using this paradoxical, that's what, he, he, that's what his term for it is, paradoxical intention. Uh, so uh, I've even given the suggestion <laughs> to a client that the harder you try to say the word try, the more difficult it becomes. <laughs> and uh, that changes a person's con uh, consciousness about it. He goes on further to explain. The reader will note that this procedure consists of a reversal of the patient's attitude inasmuch as his fear is replaced by paradoxical wish by this treatment the wind is taken out of the sails of the anxiety. See? Uh, such a procedure, however, must make use of the specific, specifically human capacity for self-detachment inherent in a sense of humor. And it's important to have a sense of humor about ourselves. <laughs> uh, the basic capacity to detach from oneself is actualized whenever what he calls the logotherapeutic technique called paradoxical intention is applied. At the same time, the patient is enabled to put himself at a distance from his own neurosis. A statement consistent with this is found in uh, Gordon Allport's book, The Individual and His Religion. Uh, the neurotic who learns to laugh at himself may be on the way to self-management, perhaps cure, <laughs> with paradoxical intention. And, uh, and it, so that, that's what the law of reverse reaction really is. And uh, it's a very, very uh, important technique, okay? All right. Now, so some conclusions here. Oh, well, yeah, he, he uh, 
he went on to live a pretty long time after that. Um, and incidentally, he wrote this book in only nine days. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's really wild. And uh, he remarried, and uh, he remained the head of a neurology department. Um, so uh, his technique is a technique that we literally uh, have adopt, uh, adopted for ourselves. Uh, that's part of our uh, dominant laws of suggestibility. Uh, it's, it's interesting to read these books and find the parallels of what we're taught here and the modality that we're taught here and other things. And I think it's pretty important. Uh, I'm going to read just one more thing to you. Uh, so uh, to find your meaning in life, you have to define what you want to accomplish and then take action uh, towards accomplishing it. But he points out earlier in the book something, you know, if your goal is success and you chase success, you're not likely. If your goal is to do the best job you can, then you're likely to achieve success. See, that's kind of like the law of detachment also. I'm going to let go of the outcome, but I'm going to pay attention to the details. And uh, books like this is, I would suggest, paying attention to the details. Okay, so Frankel was once asked, to express in one sentence the meaning of his own life. Okay. He wrote the response on a paper and asked his students to guess what he had written. After some moments of quiet reflection, a student surprised Frankel by saying, the meaning of your life is to help, help others find the meaning of theirs. And he replied, that was it exactly. Those are the very words I had written. So I uh, hope you'll check out uh, Victor Frankel, a very valuable resource an inspiration of what somebody can actually accomplish. Okay, That's all the time we have today. I want to thank you for uh, joining us, and I encourage you to uh, invest in this book. And please join us again next week for another interesting book. My name is Mark Gravel, and I want to thank you for your attention and wish you a very pleasant goodbye. I'm in, no matter how much other people are trying to control me, the one thing that they can't control is how I decide to react. And that's, a, I think, a very, very powerful message. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's a good suggestion to give somebody in hypnosis. No matter what your situation is, you have the power to decide how you can share with it. Victor Frankl before he was arrested and sent to a concentration camp, he was a practicing psychiatrist. And he, uh, he had his own methods, which incidentally we'll see here in a few minutes, are very similar to ours <laughs> here at HMI. It's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, and it was, but his, but that's what helped him, that's one thing want to react. Uh, so many of our reactions are automatic, aren't they? Okay. He has a little section here on the meaning of life, and basically he, he, what he talks about the meaning of life is it's what we do. It's what we accomplish. Now, he uh, points out that he disagrees with uh, one Sigmund Freud and another one, Alfred, that helped him survive. But I want to make it very clear is that he kept telling, he kept also the, the thought that he may eventually rejoin his wife once the war was over. Uh, but he, he existed for three years under these terrible, terrible conditions, but he kept going. And, uh, and basically, what kept him going, this is the essential message of the book, is no matter what situation
Well, hello and welcome again to HMI Book Club. If you're just joining us, we're discussing Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Now, I, I need to give you a little background, which I did.